physical contact is not the only way to establish relationship. What people are calling as love today is actually just mutual benefit scheme. You need to fall in love, something of you must go, then only there is room for love. How can we let go with the past and the difficult events in our life? Alexander, I thought love is about coming together, not about breaking up <laughs> I know <laughs> So, uh, I know these things are happening everywhere because uh, we are not looking at life as life. We have been educated, our education systems, our idea of science and technology, has all deduced itself into how to use everything for our benefit. From the smallest bacteria to the largest animal on the planet, everything we want to use for our benefit, the very planet itself, we want to exploit it for our benefit. In that, unfortunately, human beings also are included. So, this… Uh, what people are calling as love today is actually just mutual benefit scheme. You give me this, I'll give you that. The moment you don't give me that, I won't give you this. And that is why you're starting the question about love with breakup and divorce <laughs> That's true. In my understanding of life, love is about weaving two lives together. Two lives becoming like one. But now uh, we are talking about breakup. Today when we talk about love, people are asking, thinking in terms of uh, <laughs> expiry date, how long will this last? So, this is an unfortunate situation that people will not know the profoundness of sharing life uh, with somebody or, uh, you know, because when… when you really want to include somebody as a part of your life, you will have to vacate some of yourself. Something of you should fall. This English expression, I don't know what they say in French, but the English expression of falling in love is a good thing. See, you cannot rise in love, you cannot fly in love, you cannot climb in love, you can only fall in love. Something that is you must fall. So right now we are trying to climb in love, so there are troubles <laughs> all the time. So is there a French expression for falling in love? It's the same. It's Tombe amoureux, which is falling in love. We have the same expression, if we translate. That's good. French are still falling in love. That is a good thing to hear <laughs> Because it is only become a mutual benefit scheme for most people, how to get what I want. Love is not about getting what you want. It is an opportunity to make yourself vulnerable. It's an opportunity to lose yourself. This is not a profit-oriented project. Love is not a profit-oriented project. It is uh, willingly going for a loss. That's what it is about. But the moment you think about profit, then of course, there are… Uh, right from the day one, there is friction. Only because of hormonal, uh, you know, draw, people may be coming together. Otherwise, the way modern societies are getting structured, <laughs> we have almost left no room for love. It is only about what I can get out of you. So, when this is the way, breakup is a natural process because if you're trying to squeeze joy out of somebody, then it's not going to work. If your life is about sharing the best that you have, then it'll work. I'm not saying it is not there at all, but unfortunately, largely it's moving in this direction. What can I get out of you? What can you do for me? It's not about what can I do for you. So, this falling in love has to come back. Right now, people are doing love. No, no, you need to fall in love. Something of you must go, then only there is room for love. Otherwise, there is just a mutual benefit scheme. The moment there is no benefit for you, of course, it will end. Let me tell you a joke. Is it okay? French allow a joke, right? Yeah, I love the jokes <laughs> A Frenchman just had a breakup and he had just received a text message 
on his phone that the girl said, this is the end of it. So he was slowly reading through it and his mother came and asked, what are you reading? He didn't want to tell her, so he said, uh, I'm reading a recipe of a very nice, uh, you know, a gourmet food. Yeah. She looked at him and said, it looks like you have come to cutting onions because he was tearing up <laughs> It looks like you come to the part where they're cutting onions <laughs> So even if you… even if you tear up when you cut onions, if you cook well, still the food tastes good, all right? So this whole thing about human beings not able to manage their relationships, one important thing is, right now in English language it's become like this, I think I suspect that it could be the French who started this, that to… see, for, uh, for us here in India, when we say a relationship, it could be many things. It could be with our parents, it could be with our siblings, it could be with our friends. There's a relationship between guru and the disciple, variety of relationships. But in the West now it has been made, if you say a relationship, it means it's a body-based relationship, unfortunately. For that they are paying a price, because body is not the only way to establish relationship. Physical contact is not the only way to establish relationship. Intellectually you can have relationship, emotionally you can have relationships. So emotional relationships are always far more, uh, what to say, more touching in your life, more tender to you uh, than body-based relationships, but right now, we have made it like this, if you utter the word relationship, everybody assumes that, uh, you know, you have a body-based relationship. I'm even afraid to use that word. If I say, uh, I have a good relationship with uh, Alexander, people will think something else <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that emotional relationship will be or can be more powerful than body relationship? Obviously, bodies can only have encounters, not relationships. It takes a mind and emotion to have a relationship, isn't it? And it is very powerful if you invest your emotions in something, only then life becomes powerful and, you know, meaningful for you to exist.